might have opened up a little can of worms here, guys. <laughs> so, thanks for letting me speak again. I'll try to make this brief. Uh, Deborah, you're absolutely wrong. This is not a Christian nation. This is a constitutional nation. There is not one word of God or Christianity in the Constitution. I and didn't speak to Christianity. I was speaking about God. I never said anything okay, God about... Or, I'm making an there's example, a big difference. A there's a big difference. Well, I'll just say God. There is no God in the Constitution, and there are two pieces of religion in the Constitution, both with a very strong no about it. And if you just Google, we're our founding fathers Christian, and if anybody's watching, please Google right now, our, we're our founding fathers religious. And you'll find out they were, yes, they believed in an almighty, but they were very anti-religious. This is to protect, they, they designed this country so the minorities are protected. And the reason, the one idea they had that they put into place was that we need freedom for religion, but first we need freedom from religion. That means nobody can tell us what to think. At the same time, we need the freedom for religion so anybody can believe whatever they want to. And if you put in God we trust in the background, what you really mean, if you are truly representative, is in God some of us trust because most of us trust in God, 75% on the average trust in a God, but the rest do not. So is it really fair to have something on the background that is not representative of the entire community? To vote on this particular issue is a wrong idea. It's a bad idea because if you start doing this, what if there was a mosque that wanted to go up and 75% of the Christians say, we don't like uh, Islam, we don't like Muslims, and I'm just giving this an example now. You could say, as voters, you could say, let's put this to uh, the vote for the citizens. This would be an extremely bad idea to have your citizens start voting on religious issues. Al was perfectly right. You should do the vote, and I sincerely hope that you vote to not vote at all, just decline this entire motion. Thank you. Uh, Arnold Goodman, my address is on file. I've been here before. I came here prepared not to say anything, but I've heard so many misconceptions about the Founding Fathers and freedom that I feel compelled to speak. The Founding Fathers went through discussions heated discussions and debates in all the states, very similar to what I've heard here tonight. And they very wisely came down by balancing the freedom for religion, because previously religions had been oppressed by rulers, and freedom from religion, because they didn't want religion to oppress those who didn't believe in that religion or in another religion. And basically they said, my freedom stops where your freedom starts, and your freedom stops where my freedom stops, starts. It's a balance, and it isn't just the majority. And if you want some good references as to what the Founding Fathers went through, I'll be glad to supply them. There are lots of books out there, but I hear tremendous misconceptions about the Founding Fathers and what they believed and didn't believe. What they believed in was fairness and freedom. And I've said before, and I'll say again, you were elected to run the city. You were not elected to preach to any of us or all of us. And one more thing, a nice little quote from a very well-known American philosopher and pragmatist, George Santayana who wrote in his book, Reason and Religion, in 1909, any attempt to speak without speaking some particular language is just as hopeless as the attempt to have a religion that shall be no religion in particular. And I would add, or a God that shall be no God in particular. Uh, if you'll bear with me. Uh, members of the council, in this state we have initiative and referendum. You are entirely within your rights in taking an issue 
of this importance and putting in front of the voters. We have the measures that come out of the uh, legislature. They, they come out with a majority legislature, or they can be come out with the, with the signature route. You are entirely within your way of doing things that you can go ahead with this measure, and you shouldn't be deferred from doing it by any argument otherwise. Thank you. Hello, Jan Naylor, uh, again, 10335 Prado Woods Drive. Um, I definitely respect the opinions of, of everyone who gets up here and, and speaks. Um, however, watching the meeting last, last month, I, I was very moved by three of our own citizens in particular uh, that, that spoke in regards to the motto of this country, the national motto. And it brings to mind uh, what is happening right now with our state when uh, the Supreme Court of California overturned the voters of California uh, with the gay marriage initiative. And speaking of um, famous founding fathers or famous people, uh, Thomas Jefferson once said that the fall of democracy will happen when the will of the majority of the people is demanded to change by those few that stand up and cry the loudest. And I am with Deborah Polly on this, that we cannot continue to cave in, that, that I think putting it to the voters is not taking the easy way out. I think that it is the right thing to do. Let the voters decide. I, I right now, won't even tell you how I will vote. I think that's private. But I just think that it is something that, that the voters of Villa Park should do. And I also believe that our council will respect that and not do something crazy like our Supreme Court did and overturned the voters in the state of California. Um, and it will be. It is a divisive issue. But I'll tell you why it becomes divisive. It's those few that are crybaby losers. And they just absolutely have to have their way. And let's let the voters decide and then leave it at that. <laughs>